What's happening, everyone? How's everyone doing tonight? I hope everyone is doing fantastic. I am joined by my good friend, Gary Aid, who does a tremendous job in podcasting and radio. Um, it's awesome to be collaborating with him. And we're trying out this new show where we only go 10 minutes uh, and we just... Pick a topic and we discuss it. Uh, so we're thrilled to have you with us tonight. What's up, Gary? What's up, man? Man, I'm, I'm feeling great. We, we're going to get into this James Harden stuff. Uh, Let's do it. You, you know what? James Harden has invited everyone to his pity party, and I have not accepted the invite. I will not <laughs> receive the invitation. Look, it's been mailed to my house here in Southern California. I checked my mailbox. It was there. The invitation was there. Mm -hmm. I brought it into the house, opened the envelope. And once I opened the envelope, you know what I did, Gary? Made sure I, it didn't smell like alcohol. I ripped it apart. I ripped it <laughs> apart because I don't have a sweater. I would have sweated it. But I ripped it apart, tossed it in the trash can. And you know what I said? I don't want that junk because you know why? James Harden is a cancer. And I can't associate myself with people like James Harden. Now, that's no disrespect. That's no disrespect to James Harden because his game, we have to respect his game. But this is the James Harden of old, not the James Harden of today. Don't get it twisted. Not the James Harden of today. The James, I'm talking about the James Harden of old. Because the James Harden of old, he was a scoring machine. Am I right or am I wrong? He, I mean, he look. had some scoring titles. He mm -hmm. did really good. The problem with James Harden, before I give you the floor, the problem with James Harden is that he carries too much baggage, right? And that could be a, 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 a lot for our team. You know, it, it, I mean, the bags are just too heavy. The bags are just too heavy. The dude is a cancer. It's obvious that he's not a leader of man. I've talked about this before. He is definitely not a leader of man. And whatever happened between him and, and, and Daryl Morey, it is not good. Because the last time, if I remember correctly, these two had a great relationship. But it's obvious there's no longer this value of open-minded, open trust, that we've um that we've over 692 games if I'm being exact that Daryl Morey and James Harden have been together in Houston and in Philly you know now look Daryl Morey was nice to James Harden he bent he bent over backwards for this dude he gave him basically everything he wanted when he pouted when he cried and when he bemoaned that he wasn't getting his way. What did Daryl Morey do? He spoiled him like a sport, like like the the petulant child that he is, you know. And I think that's why James Harden behaves the way he does now. To call this man a liar when he went out of his way for you is classless and very distasteful. And if I'm any organization in the NBA, I don't want any parts of James Harden. No, I mean, look, with James Harden and the relationship with Maury, that's what I want to focus on. In all of human history, there have been mentor and mentee. There has been patron and prodigy. James Harden is the prodigy. Daryl Maury is the patron. We saw this at the foundation of our country. Alexander Hamilton, probably the most prodigious of the founding fathers, but the patron of Hamilton was George Washington. Hamilton's career is owed to the patronage of George Washington from their time together in the Revolutionary War, through the Continental Congress, through the um, uh, Constitutional Convention, right through George Washington's presidency when Hamilton was Secretary of State. It required Hamilton, as talented as he was, as great as he was, knew where his bread was buttered. It was buttered at the table of George Washington. Daryl Morey is George Washington here. And James Harden is Alexander Hamilton. And James Harden forgot who his patron is, who has championed him throughout his entire NBA career, at least the meat of it, 
who has gone out and said the most ridiculous, stupid things. Like the time he said, James Harden is a better offensive player than Michael Jordan. Yes, uh, Daryl Morey actually said that and believed it, or at least he didn't show that he has fingers crossed behind his back. I don't know. But the bottom line is you're going to burn a bridge like that. Then like you said, Jonathan, uh, th that's, that's a, a person who is a team cancer. And I don't use that term lightly. I don't use that term often, but it's the truth. And the other truth is this guy has not learned hard. And I mean, what it means to be a, um, to have relationships. He's not learned what it means to not um, get to separate business from personal. We know what he wants. He wants a max extension. Maury's not giving it to him. James Harden took that personally, made it personal, and now it's personal. People have to understand it's business. You're 33, 34 years old, coming off multiple consecutive lesser seasons. Now, part of that is you're asked to play a different role, playing alongside Embiid. There's no question about that. But part of it is, look, you're not 28 anymore. And the idea that Maury, whose job it is to build an effective roster, to stay within the cap, to do what's best for the organization, decided that right now is not the best time to do that. Harden got upset and turned what was a business transaction into a personal vendetta, a personal vendetta against the very guy who has been his John the Baptist since he was in the NBA or since he's in Houston anyway. This is outrageous. It makes no sense. It's self-destructive. And the truth of the matter is, it might have ripple effects. That's the other thing we haven't touched on. So if you move James Harden, you're not going to get another star for him. You'll probably get draft picks. You might get uh, rotational pieces, young contracts. You might get another big contract that you have to eat, like someone like, not that he'll go to the Knicks, but someone of the ilk of like Evan Fournier or someone else with a big cap number like that. Um, and then what? You have Joel Embiid, who people are going to start blaming for running through superstars. I don't think it's his fault. Um, but People are going to start whispering that. You've already heard that stuff. Uh, you're going to start having Joel Embiid trade rumors. You've already heard that. And where does that leave Philadelphia? Embiid's pushing 30. You don't have a championship contending team after Harden's gone. Uh, then what? Are you going to trade Embiid too? That's the ripple effect. I mean, are you just going to go with the rebuild? And if that happens, James Harden will have destroyed two franchises in the span of – well, three franchises in the span of about four years. Uh, get this guy away from me. Like you said, Jonathan, I want nothing to do with this guy. He's uh, rip up that he's invitation. Toxic. He's toxic. Like, he's toxic. I don't want him. And, and where are you going to trade him? Who's going to want him? Uh, and, and you just you just mentioned it. Not a good he team. Does, he, he destroys franchises. Everywhere three of he's them. been, he's destroyed yep. franchises. Three of them. Yeah, three of them. And, he and has, who's going to take him? He who's going to take him? He's back from winning. Yeah, who's going to take him? Is it going to be... Like Detroit, his yeah. selfishness is the impediment of a team's success. I now, just, I'll just put it that way. I have an idea. We know he wants to go to the Clippers, right? That's where he wants to go. What if Why? He, so he what, could go there and destroy that franchise well, too? Well, well whatever. If I'm Philadelphia, that's it's not my... enough with Paul George and Kawhi well, well, Leonard. Well, here's 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 what I'm about to say. If I'm Philly, I don't care. That's not my problem if he's going to go there and destroy that franchise. But what about this? You know Ballmer is getting sick and tired of the breakdowns of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. What if you trade one problem for another? You take my trash, I take yours. Take your pick. You want Kawhi or, or Paul George? We'll give you one for Harden. Straight up. This way, because it actually might make sense. If the Clippers are going to take Harden, it, it actually makes make sense, sense for Philly. Because think does about make sense. It, well, think about it like this. If you're Philly, you don't want to cause the ripple effect of blowing up a championship window with Joel Embiid in his prime, right? So what do you do? You go get another aged star because that's all you, the only kind of star you can get for Harden is another aged one with injury problems. So you go get Paul George. He's probably the more attainable of the two. Trade one for one. And you know what? Cross your fingers and hope it goes okay because the fact is if you trade Harden for draft picks or young players like you normally would an older star – that means you're going to probably have to trade and beat and do a whole rebuild. You don't want to do that right now if you're the 76ers. I'm telling you right now, the Clippers would implode if they acquired James Harden in a trade. They, they imploded for me, already. For me, <laughs> that's true. But to me, that makes the situation far worse than what it already is. You know, you're adding a, a, a cancerous player 
to your roster. Someone Kawhi who, Leonard's not cancerous? Who cares only about himself and made it real clear that he is not standing by a man who stood by him because he didn't get his way. Because it didn't go his way. So well, he has to pout and I'm wound. with you. But like, isn't Kawhi Leonard the same kind of guy? Isn't what Kawhi is Leonard the same kind of guy? He he didn't get his way in San Antonio. He faked an injury. He didn't want to stay in Toronto, so he bounced. He won't play two games in a row in L.A. no matter what. Isn't he the same but, self? But, but has he cried wolf since he's been with the Clippers? He won't play if he has a hangnail. True. <laughs> but, but, but answer the question. Has he cried wolf since he's joined the Clippers? No, no, he, has, he hasn't. He but has he's also been. not played any now, game. One day has he has he said, "I want to, I want out of L.A. I, I, I want to request a trade." Well, why would he? Not, he gets paid max dollars to do nothing. He doesn't play. He's and, played like and and, 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 and speaking of years. max dollars, speaking of max dollars, that's a, that's another thing. That's another thing that's puzzling to me with James Harden because James Harden was adamant about taking the pay cut. And then he complains because he's not getting the max contract. Yeah, yeah right. Yep. So, so I, I, I'm confused. That that's contradictory to me. That's contradictory to me. You 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 speak one side of your out of your out of your mouth, and then the next day, oh, you wake up one morning and you just say, "Oh, I want the max contract." Oh, I didn't want the pay cut. Oh, the pay cut's fine. But then the next day, all of a sudden, I want the max contract. Which is it, James Harden? What is it? What what's gonna make James Harden happy? Because nope. I have there's there's been absolutely nothing that nope. makes this man happy. But man, we went over twelve. We went over twelve minutes. <laughs> I mean, we we got a lot off our chest. We we had plenty to say. We had a mouthful. Absolutely. So but, there we have it. Good stuff. There you have it. There you have it. This was yep. awesome. Yes. Uh, it, it was a pleasure. We'll see you guys again on 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 Tuesday Tuesday night. Yep, what, t- Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, night, probably. Wednesday morning. Yep. Ah, uh, got my days confused, but you know, we'll see you, you when we we'll see you when we see you again. Thanks for joining us tonight. For my good friend Gary and myself, the Sports Judge. You guys have a wonderful night. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share this content and hit the like button. Do it, baby.